Hey guys, it's Wednesday, 11.06 a.m. on February 21st, 2018. And I got a call from my mom this morning who was saying that she was having a hard time breathing. And you could hear the dog in the background too that was just hacking up a storm. And it really didn't make any sense. So what I did was I went, like I did yesterday, went to Weather Underground to see what the um, EPA's level of pollution was reported in Mesa, Arizona. What I found interesting was that it, the actual little smiley face that they have to indicate this <clears throat> had a green smiley face, which meant all is clear. But as I clicked on further to get down to the EPA's webpage link to this uh, site on Weather Underground, I discovered that they have nearby pollution monitors. And those nearby pollution monitors do not give a green smiley face. They show that the levels of particulate matter of 2.5 or smaller is in the 0.76. That is an outrageous level <clears throat> of particulate in the atmosphere where she is. Further, she described the haze in the atmosphere as being a pinkish color. Well, you can do a little research and find out about the, the, the relationship, the correlation between lithium injection in the atmosphere and the pinkish haze. But let me just, before I go there, let me just explain to you why I'm doing this video. I have seen many people over the last several years try to bring America's attention to what is happening up in the sky. I appreciate the research. I appreciate the alarm bells that people are sounding. And I especially appreciate the fact that the people you're trying to tell look at you as if you have two heads. I have great empathy for you people because they look at me the same way. But here's what I want to offer you. I want to offer you the tools here, the actual pollution monitors that we can reference for people to show them where the where the rubber meets the road. This is the one dot of connection that we have to explain to people what is really happening. And we have to do it in a way that we bring the physical evidence of what's happening up in the sky together with their personal experiences and measurable measurable standards where we can demonstrate to them what is actually happening. Now let me explain to you how wonderful this, those, these nearby pollution monitors are in demonstrating this, this point. I'm going to take you over to the EPA webpage where they have just a very simple explanation of what is particulate matter and how does it get into the air. Now this is where we have to do a little Inspector Clouseau connecting the dots for people, but it's very easy to connect the dots and I want to show you how to do this. Particulate matter stands for, PM stands for particulate matter, it's a term for a mixture of solid particles and liquid dropper, droplets found in the air. There are two different sizes that are measured. One is a PM10. These are inhalable products with diameters that are generally 10 micrometers and smaller. And then there's this one. This is the one we want to pay attention to, the PM of 2.5. These are fine inhalable particles with diameters that are generally 2.5 micrometers and smaller. Those are about a 30th the size of a strand of hair. The PM10 is usually going to be like your mold spores and your pollen, whereas your PM2.5, as we scroll down and find out from the EPA, they are from man-made emissions. Some are emitted directly from a source such as construction sites, unpaved roads, fields, smokestacks, or fires, none of which are happening or are in the vicinity of Mesa, Arizona. So we can eliminate that particular source. Most particles form in the atmosphere as a result of what? As a result of complex chemicals. What kind of chemicals? Such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, which are pollutions emitted. Now here's where it gets a little, here's where things get a little sketchy with our pals over at the EPA. They are pollutants emitted from, according to the EPA, power plants, industries, and automobiles. Well, you guys, just put on your thinking cap here. We have been, the EPA has been monitoring and regulating what can come out of power plants, industries, and automobiles. Those have been so highly regulated, you guys, that the emission standards on your car are no longer responsible for these high readings of PM2.5, especially in Mesa, Arizona. I mean, they just don't have that kind of traffic. There are no smokestacks. There's no fire happening right now. There's no industry in Mesa, Arizona. This is an anomaly that needs to be addressed. So let's go back and look at what kind of chemicals they're suggesting are in the air that cause this. Well, one of them, it says here, 
chemicals such as sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides? Well, all you have to do is a quick, a quick Google search in Google Scholar under stratospheric aerosol injection, and you are going to see that they have been using, quite literally, emissions from aircrafts to inject the atmosphere with sulfuric acid since at least as far back as 2006. And you can read this, albedo. Now, some of the reasons they do this is for albedo enhancement of the atmosphere, which is to re do a... Uh, to reflect the sun back, you know, they, 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 they have this theory, this, this scientific theory that if they load up the atmosphere with reflectants like sulfuric acid or aluminum or different chemicals that they'll be able to create some sort of a shield. Uh, Harvard most recently uh, announced a solar shield as one of the objectives that is necessary to combat global climate change. But they've been doing this since at least, at least, in this particular query, well, you can see it goes back all the way to 1974. But let me just pull up this particular one that actually acknowledges that they're doing stratospheric injection with condensable va vapor that comes from aircraft, okay? Because this is where we can demonstrate to people that these things here are not a conspiracy theory. They are measurable in the atmosphere where you actually live and based on the research, if my computer will actually load this page, you can demonstrate that here, when, if this page pulls up, what we will see is that this is um, a peer-reviewed scientific journal entry from the uh, geophysical research letters, where I'll just read you part of this abstract. Recent analysis suggests that the effectiveness of stratospheric aerosol climate engineering through emissions of non-condensable vapors, such as sulfuric, uh, sulfur dioxide, is limited because the slow conversion to sulfuric acid tends to produce aerosol particles that are too large. Sulfur dioxide injection may be so inefficient that it is difficult to counteract the radiative forcing due to carbon dioxide doubling. Here we describe an alternative method in which aerosol is formed rapidly in the plume following injection of sulfuric of sulfuric acid, a condensable vapor from an aircraft. So this whole article describes a more efficient way that they can use sulfuric acid as it is emitted from an airplane emission. You guys, these are very real articles. This is very, um, this is very real. This is very real stuff. And then now people will say, well, why, why would they do that? You know, um, well, according to them, it is to reduce some of the adverse effects of geoengineering as radiative heating of the lower stratosphere. Th these guys are to compensate for climate changes produced by carbon dioxide. This is why they think they're doing it, to compensate for climate changes produced by carbon dioxide. But I'm going to explain to you two things. First of all, I want to show you what the very practical, the immediate danger of this kind of insanity produces. Once they, once they come up with these ideas and they, they decide to try one thing and then they try another, they do peer-reviewed articles of, you know, well, this particular thing worked, this particular thing didn't. Right here they're talking about sulfur dioxides turning into sulfur, sulfuric acid as it's spraying out of planes. What they end up doing is they do real-time tests on these things, you guys. They have real time live experiments that they do in the atmosphere where they are literally spewing the stuff out of the plane and writing articles about what is the most effective. You guys, we see cluster deaths of animals and birds and people. Let me just show you this. In, in 2016, if you guys are unaware of this particular event, it took place in Melbourne, Australia, where over the course of six hours, Something happened that they all of a sudden everybody in the particular region had respiratory distress. It was considered by, by physicians who have written about this event. They have said it was the worst case of respiratory distress that has ever happened in the history of the world. Let me read, read you just some of the details here. Uh, this guy, Mr. McGann, was one of thousands of people in Melbourne having an attack of, now here comes the spin from the New York Times quote-unquote thunderstorm asthma. You guys, there's no such thing as thunderstorm asthma. 
Anyway, it says here that they flooded the city's emergency rooms, swamped ambulance call lines, and joined lines around pharmacies during six hours on November 21st. All the people were struggling for breath. About 8,500 people went to the hospital. You guys, here's the problem. When they discovered that this particular process didn't work and they try a new process, 8,500 people end up in the hospital in Melbourne, okay? This has nothing to do with pollen. This has to do with the fact that eight people died and one remains in intensive care more than a week after the quote-unquote thunderstorm surge. You guys, this is not thunderstorm asthma. This is atmospheric forcing. This is stratospheric injection of, of aerosols that create the, the pollutants that are of the size micron, 2.5 micron, that, that get huge levels in Mesa, Arizona. You guys, there's no reason for this to be here. This is, these are the dots that we have to connect for people to show them that this is really happening. There are thousands and thousands of articles explaining this. Now, let me take you to the next level because this is the most important question you are going to get. And I want you to listen to this carefully. People are going to say, why would they do this over their own heads? That is the number one question that people ask that they think we're crazy because we point this stuff out, we give them the literature, we tell them, and the, the one thing that they can't get over is the fact that people would actually do this over their own heads. Well, let's think about what is actually being done over their own heads. These people are doing this, as we can see in their own literature, to compensate for climate changes produced by carbon dioxide. Okay, this is something that's highly debated. Most people, who don't have a, a pony in the race, most people who are not politically active trying to get taxes out of these carbon exchanges, recognize that there is no such thing as climate changes produced by carbon dioxide. In fact, people who actually study the environment say that a richer climate or carbon dioxide environment will be more beneficial to trees because that's actually what trees live on, okay? The reason these people are so blind the reason these people are so out of their minds with these insane ideas is found right here in the Bible. It is as clear and as simple as it gets. In, I'll give you just one example here. In Leviticus 26, 4, God says, I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Why do these people do this insane stuff over their own head? Because... They don't believe God. They don't believe that God has this covered. It is as simple as simple can be. In Leviticus, you guys, yeah, there's some complicated laws that were given to the distinguish the children of Israel from all other nations. But the bottom line message of Leviticus is, you guys, I made you. You are my creature, creatures. This is my creation. If you recognize me, as your author of your life, and you submit to my will, I am the one who gives you your rain in due seasons, your land will yield or increase, the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Is it any surprise at all, you guys, that the more we have become a totally secularized nation that absolutely rejects the authority of God to such an extent that we take the Ten Commandments out of our courtrooms and we become this kind of a nation? that is governed by people who in the dark, who in secrecy, or I shouldn't even say in the dark. The reason I reference in the dark is because this is done with vocabulary words that most people don't understand. So even though it's right out there, we're mostly in the dark because these are hard vocabulary words to get to the bottom of to understand what these people are actually doing. Okay, so they are. They're doing this in kind of a clandestine way, whether it's intentional or not. I don't think it's intentional. But professing themselves to be wise these people are becoming fools and they are not worshiping the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. What they are doing is submitting themselves to the second Thessalonian two curse where God says, if you don't receive a love of the truth, God will send you a strong delusion. You guys, it is delusional to be spraying this kind of stuff over your own children's heads. No doubt. But there is a very biblical explanation. These people are vain in their imaginations and they profess themselves to be wise, and they do all this crazy stuff, like spewing things out of airplanes, 
with with atmosphere chargers which are now loaded all over our neighborhoods those are those microwave towers that we have in mass everywhere those are the radiation sources that are literally working on this particulate that they are raining down above us and it is very very true it's very very true and it's all because of a delusion that people have forgotten God it's all because I mean this is just one example from Leviticus 26 4 but you guys, there are tons and tons. I mean, you can. it's basically because they don't believe Genesis 1.14, you know, where God describes the creation of the earth. And he, he literally specifies seasons, you know. These are things that, that we don't need to worry about. These are things that God does. But they don't believe God. They try to take matters into their own hands. And they mess things up. It's delusional, but it's real. And the reason I'm making this video is to show you that we have the pollution monitors right by us to actually to, to, to prove with metrics that this stuff is happening and the EPA makes it easy for us because they cite these kinds of chemicals and then you can see that these guys are actually talking about doing it with uh, you know air from aircraft <sighs> so anyway hopefully this will be useful to you guys as you go out there and you try to you know evangelize people <laughs> into seeing that this stuff is really happening Hopefully you'll be able to use some of these tools that we have still available to us. Um, you know, the pollution monitors, the EPA regulated pollution monitors, and we'll be able to get people to start thinking about this stuff. But the biggest obstacle you're going to have is people asking, well, why would they do that? How could they do that? Well, like I said, this is a very biblical explanation. You know, people who don't, who don't recognize the authority of God are literally, there are about three different ways that they can get caught up. And they get, they get, basically, they get blinded. Their, their foolish hearts are darkened. And they get blinded. And blind people do a bunch of crazy stuff. I mean, you guys, look at what happens in Sodom and Gomorrah when the angels blind those, those men who are trying to get into Lot's house. They don't walk away. They get struck with blindness, and they proceed even more to try and get into his house. That is the curse. That is a blindness that happens to mankind that totally explains why they would be considering themselves wise in their own imaginations and in their own blindness. They would literally hurt themselves. That's just the way it is. It's a biblical, it's a biblical ex explanation for a very biblical problem. This is a vanity. It's a vanity of man that's just outrageous. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you some links to... Uh, the ways that we can measure this and, and, and try and hopefully get people to wake up.